What's going on friends? How are you doing? First of all, I want to thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Elizabeth, also known as Weekly Bread Jr. I am a streamer on Twitch and now I have a podcast. Welcome to Googly Talks. Is it all just a game? The world versus gaming where we talk about video games and if they were in real life, what would the environment look like? So <clears throat> we've talked about a couple games in the past. We've talked about Sims. Uh, we've talked about Call of Duty, first person shooters, and I kind of want to dive into a kind of a childhood memory to me, similar to the last episode, um, like The Sims, that was a popular game I used to play when I was little, but a game I still play and I got into, into console gaming and handheld gaming is Mario Kart. So... Let's dive in to a little bit of introduction. For those who don't know about Mario Kart, it's a game, it's a racing game developed by Nintendo, and it was a spinoff from the Super Mario series, launched in 1992 with Super Mario Kart being its first title on the Super Nintendo system. It now has a total of 14 games, and it sold over 150 million copies worldwide. Mario Kart mainly features characters from the Mario franchise, hence the name, such as Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, Koopa Troopa, and Donkey Kong Jr. There's other spinoffs that also include the Pac-Man series characters and the Tamagotchi series, and then any buyable material also has characters from The Legend of Zelda, um, Animal Crossing features like Isabelle, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has up to 42 characters, including the Inklings from even Splatoon. Now, there are a couple game modes within the game, so it's not just the same thing over and over again. I know I'm not the best at racing games, especially when you first get into it, so it has four difficulty settings based on the size of the engine you will be driving. And it also has different types of vehicles you can drive as well. So the four modes you can start with are 50cc, 100cc, 150cc, um, and then in the most recent game, you can go up to 200ccs. So you have a lot to choose from. I usually start on the 50cc, and then I will build my confidence from there. The game's pretty much built for a multiplayer system, so you can play with friends, family, or online, which is really cool, and you can play versus each other when race on any course that you may have unlocked with customized rules such as team racing, item frequency, or even just like a quick play mode, which is nice. Then there is a battle mode. So you will use more item frequencies like shells to pop like these balloons that you have on your cart and you'll battle each other in a closed arena so it's not a loop. And the last player to have all your balloons and all the other balloons are gone from each person wins the game and for these you could either have also collect coins just whoever has the most coins you also have like sheriff stars in one game mode and then you have the balloons of course if you are playing alone of course there are various battle types you can do with the rules whether you, and you can have cpu controlled players which is really nice so you can still experience the full game even if you are by yourself or like i said earlier you can play online and you can complete in races and battles through online services such as nintendo wi-fi um, nintendo network or nintendo switch online which i remember I used to play, for me, residing in North America on that server, I used to play with people all around the world, especially in Japan, and that's where I really grew my racing skills, is with playing with other people on the internet. One thing I've really enjoyed about the Mario Kart series is that they make it fair for everybody. So when you use these power-up items to complete whatever goal in whatever specific game mode you are playing, 
um, there will be something like a speed boost, or you can stun opponents using Koopa shells or banana peels, or kind of like trick them and have like fake boxes where they'll be stunned as well. Um, and it's all based on the current position of the race. So the people furthest back will receive better items that could benefit you to move up. So that will be like bigger speed boosts, or um, the leader may only have defensive items as 11 other people behind you are trying to get to your spot. And the goal of the Mario Kart designers wants to initiate something called rubber banding, where it gives racers a realistic chance to catch up to the leading leader. So they can use those skills to their advantage. Um, to have a chance in the game so you you never feel stuck which is really really nice and also it prevents people from rage quitting so like if you all of a sudden were in third and then you got hit with like three items and like a bunch of people were really close behind you and then you also just got to like 10th place like you could just stop moving and people would just continually pass you and that wouldn't be fun for anybody because you're not you lost your competitive edge and then what's the point of the game so really initiating these items of being in this rubber band pro like rule that's placed in is super helpful for not just you but for everyone else to really have the full experience even just from a personal experience standpoint when i played Ma mario kart in general but whatever system I was using, I was a hard pick for either Peach, Daisy, or Yoshi, and I kind of think the blue shells are overrated a little bit. Like, they can be game changers for, like, people who are lower in the ranks, but, like, is it the best item in the game? I would personally disagree with it. The real winner, though, I think would be, like, the star item where you have a speed boost and you're kind of, like, invincible where no matter really what item hits you, like, it doesn't phase you at all. And I think it's, like, severely underrated. Also, with these tiny mushrooms that give you tiny speed boosts, like, if you aim that correctly and you get your boost on especially turns and you know how to control things, then... It could truly change the way a race ends. So we spend so much time perfecting our skills, trying to figure out what items we want to use, trying to really move up and play all these maps and levels on all these different systems and consoles. But like, how can we get this real life experience of playing Mario Kart, <laughs> for lack of better words, like in real life? And... Uh, when I was little, I used to do like cart go karts, and I would go around these laps, and I would think in my head like, "Oh yeah, this is totally like the game. Like I am the winner. I am Yoshi. I am going to be superior." And <laughs> it just once you finish it, because one, it's a little overpriced to do it, but like. <laughs> It's not the same, man. It's not the same of crushing your opponents on Rainbow Road and watching them fall off the map and just, like, knowing that you did everything right to deserve that trophy in regardless difficulty you choose. In my case, it would be 50 cc's. But anyways, I, just, I, I want the feeling of Mario Kart in real life. And apparently, it's... It's possible. It's possible to have this. And there are places in the world where they'll let you do this. And they will make it as close to Mario Kart as it possibly can. But they just advise not to throw things at your opponents. But you can dress up. The carts look the same. Um, and it's pretty accurate. So, And this all happened at the beginning of 2016 where a Japanese company called Marikar, so without the O and without the T, um, lets you go on public roads like a map and they'll give you costumes of the character and 
they'll let you go and race in real life and it's super super popular with tourists because it's right in the like hub of where Nintendo is and you can have it It, it's reality and I guess if you like want the true true Nintendo experience Universal Parks and Resorts and Nintendo have a Mario Kart themed ride so they're not actual physical carts you can drive it's on a track at Super Nintendo World um, at the Universal Studios in Japan theme park and it's hoping to be if Mario Kart continues to stay popular there might be a Mario Kart themed ride at Universal's Epic Universe in Florida called Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge but apparently um, through all my research people have been racing for years like even before um, this Tokyo company Mari Car uh decided to race on the streets in real life people have been doing this since the 1950s and the first go-kart was built by art inglis um using scrap metal and lawnmowers like how i would never have thought about the creativity of going down to my garage and be like hey dad i'm gonna take your tools and i'm gonna ride this baby it's like that spongebob episode and it's like it's not just a boulder it's a rock (laughs) the pioneers used to ride these babies for miles that's literally what i think of when i see lawnmowers now after i learn this like the the road has been paved like we can do this and mario kart or nintendo i guess um took it and they made it a complete different level of um god what's the word um like if people have been racing since the 1960s like why not make a video game about it like nintendo you're genius like (laughs) i i lost my train of thought but like this is the point i was trying to make like if we've been riding lawnmowers for miles like and it's legal to race on the streets for decades like make children ride lawnmowers too in video games and have the adults do it in real life like genius good job nintendo props to freaking you but now since it's like real life and people are starting to put things on roads and we we moved on from the lawnmower phase from the 1950s 1960s the best way to ride a go-kart in real life is to either do it by electric or by gas so we'll dive into kind of what both are and then how they have an impact on the environment since we have we kind of know what they used in the video game which i assume is gas since there is exhaust and then we'll we'll talk about it a little bit further so with gas engine go-karts um engines are actually slower before it reaches the top speed it can go um known as like the power band to create the torque so in the beginning of the video game you have that beep 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 like to have you go um and if you try and accelerate before and you get the timing off you'll stall and you'll move back and forth and so that's why the engine is slower like you just can't get that speed as an electric car might Um, but with electric cars the torque is instant as soon as you press the pedal so it's really useful for tracks that have multiple turns um, where you can really um uh what's drag around the corners and really make those key moves to get you towards the front of the characters or players overall electric go-karts have just a better handling to them um, regarding for a better steering and racing experience there but they're also not the most popular at the moment gas go-karts typically have a really heavy engine like the lawnmower one and the back of the um 
the location of the go-kart, which can make the weight distribution a little bit uneven. But having the person sit in it makes it a little bit better. But electric go-karts have evenly distributed battery weight because it's also a rectangle um, for a smoother ride. And since this podcast is a little <laughs> science um, according to the EPA, gas-powered engines like ones used in go-karts produce the same amount of emissions in just an hour as, as a typical car driving 350 miles per hour. And for all my non-American friends, that would be approximately 563 kilometers. Electric go-karts, on the other hand, produce zero emissions for a cleaner and safer driving experience. And then you also don't have to worry about any fuel spills, which are also bad for the environment and dangerous to people's safety. Like we all know, a good oil slick um, in our Mario Kart experience. (laughs) Also, if we need another reason to not rely on fossil fuels, exhaust fumes from gas-powered engines from gas go-karts that we use are not only bad for the environment, they could also cause people to feel really sick. And prolonged exposure can lead to more serious issues over time, such as respiratory damage, cardiovascular issues, acid rain from nitrous oxide and sulfur oxide, which are found in gas, increased climate change risks, air pollution, carbon monoxide levels are increasing, hydrocarbons are being released into the air, respiratory harm like asthma and COPD, we may have early death, or danger to the energy system and cause reproductive harm. Although gas go-karts can last longer, we will have those impacts much longer, while electric carts will need to be charged, and charging them does not affect the drivers or the environment if you use the proper fuel sources or power supply um, that could be friendlier to the environment. Now baby, let's get into the power-ups part so we can drive. We can drive with gas or electric, hopefully electric, go-karts in real life. We can get into our costumes. We can really get into the mindset of destroying our enemies from 12th to 1st place. And now we have to think of how we're going to do that. So let's think of some of these power-ups that are actually available in real life to throw at our enemies. The most two common things I can think of off the top of my head are turtle shells and mushrooms. So turtle shells are just turtles without the shells. And the most common species I can find research on are the northern Isabella, so that would be the red turtle shell, the southern Isabella, which is the green turtle shell, and the Indian star tortoise, which you can actually find in pet stores. So if we decided to have more go-karts on the road and start throwing shit at each other, um, the turtle population will decrease very rapidly, and it's already on the path to extinction, given that any historical population, especially if you have the archipelago, Um, which is uh, where a lot of really nice turtles live. Um, They had 200,000 to 300,000 tortoises, and the current population now is 10 to 15% of that. And recovery for turtles, because they live really long, and if they can't reproduce properly, it's going to be a very long and slow process. But mushrooms. Mushrooms in the game give you a power-up. So less energy would be used um, than relying on either fossil fuels or electric or gas. And we are eating them, consuming them. So, and mushrooms can actually be dormant for a while and then they can grow. So that's a viable resource that we can take upon ourselves to give a benefit to not just us and take those um, nutrient benefits, but to our place in the game. The next one I can think of is blooper. So if you aren't familiar with blooper or you can't think of exactly what he does, he's a squid that you throw at a player near you and he inks on the screen. And so you can still kind of see, but it's not as clear. So we can use squids. Squids are found in the ocean. Um, they might be found in some <laughs> indoor lakes, 
and then life, but it's a natural tactic that we can really regulate and normalize. Um, but the only downside I can see with this is once you throw the squid, it's not in water, therefore it will die. So the squid population will probably be affected as well. And then the last one I can think of um, off the top of my head would be the thundercloud, which has always confused me since I was little because once you get it, if you, what you do is you have this thing, it supposedly shocks you continuously and then it will give you a little bit of speed boost and then you bump into someone, it's a ticking time bomb, it's a hot potato. So eventually it will electrocute you enough where you'll get stunned yourself. So you have that kind of timing you have to think about to <sighs> reap the benefits before the consequence. Um, but in real life, we cannot really control weather, especially in an outdoor environment or indoor. So the only comparison I can truly think of in real life would just be getting rained on um which if you do get electrocuted on an electric vehicle you'll probably set fire and explode and if you are on a gas go-kart you'll probably get electrocuted and your go-kart will blow up and it might cause other environmental harm in the area or the track or the road of whatever you choose to drive on but since Mario Kart and go-karts are in real life, how can we have the benefit of both virtually and in real life? First of all, we can switch to electric carts. They are better for the environment. They cause little um, <clears throat> exhaust. Pardon me. I am a little coffee coffee. Um, so we would reduce our exhaust, which therefore would reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and reduce our impact to contributing to climate change. So it's better for everybody. The next thing we can work on is with those electric vehicles, we can start using hydrogen fuel cells, which is a greener part of energy, or we could start switching to more renewable energy to charge those hydrogen batteries and it will have a greater impact on our um, climate change contributions. So we will reduce, we'll, we'll practically halt our human contribution to climate change. Since we haven't really have, like we have the resources for renewable energy, but we're not really utilizing them and we still wanna use fossil fuels, we should switch to E85 fuel which is a little bit less of a great i believe it's made from corn um please if you are in the comments um let me know uh, or correct me but since i am going off the top of my head on this one it produces 15 percent less emissions and but it's not made for all engines and not all engines can take that so you will have to build specific carts which may utilize more resources than it would um, benefit off from. And since we are throwing bananas at each other, we're eating mushrooms, we're throwing turtle shells, um, <laughs> there will be less food waste overall. And we might have healthier ways of dealing with our landfills with things that might get trapped and produce um, nitrogen gas and have all that leachate be stuck in the landfill we might actually learn how to compost better and we might be able to use in our scraps of food waste and our um, human waste better to um, have not just a recreational use for it but it would be more commonly talked about um, to properly dispose of our human resources that we use. So I say resources a lot. I apologize. Um, but any of our food waste, like for me, I got a composter for my birthday. I was excited about it. I'm teaching my parents about it. It's super cool to me, but it would be a more normalized conversation and people might actually 
be able to look into it and become more and more interested of what better ways they can um, contribute better to the environment, if that's even a full sentence. So if we were wondering if what would happen if Mario Kart did happen in real life and how would it relay back to the real world? Um, it's totally possible. It already is possible. It's been around for a little bit. And even using those resources like turtle shells or like banana peels or mushrooms, it has a positive impact on the environment because things will become more normalized to talk about, um, like composting or even just stuff in general. Um, and we'll start diving into more research of electric cars and what better ways to fuel our vehicles to what we already have and maybe we'll be able to spend more time outside and spending time with friends because this might be a normal way for transportation if scooters and ubers are um and bikes are normalized for basic transportations of renting things out why can't go karts you know and it's a great way to spend time with friends other than just having this experience virtually in our console or handhelds so friends i appreciate you listening i appreciate you trying to keep track of my train of thought of where are we going how are we doing it i hope that i can start putting timestamps in but i will leave for youtube to help me or give me access to that feature i need a thousand subscribers at least or maybe a hundred um so I can't make it easier without you. Um, but I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you supporting me, whether that be on Twitch, www.twitch.tv backslash Googly Bear Junior, or just listening to my podcast even for a little bit as you're driving to your early morning commute or brushing your teeth or going to bed. Um, you, you are making an impact just listening to the world um, in this podcast to learning how to better yourself and to better take care of the world and I really admire that and it's also just really cool to merge our two favorite pastimes of video games and for me it's also spending time outside together and we get to bond over that which is super wholesome to me next week we will hopefully have a guest on our podcast so you don't have to just listen to my beautiful voice you get to listen to a friend of mine and that will be super exciting and I hope to incorporate more guests in the future with it of course all my references are down below if you're curious to where I got my information from and some of it is just from my educational background so I hope you take care of yourself I hope you have a wonderful day please drink your water get some stretches like subscribe share this video around all that good stuff and i will see you next time have a wonderful day friends with your games bass and army is what to keep in mind what you've seen is really real and it truly is a big